Now these are probably my favorite printers ever. Yes, I'm aware of how silly it sounds to have favorite printers. Like, yeah, I mean, what's next? Your favorite remote control? We've actually already done that. And Logitech killed it. Also, who the f are you? Oh yeah, I'm your lazy podcaster clone. You made me to test the SM7B, if you remember. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll deal with you later, sorry. Anyway, as I was saying, it sounds silly, but actually, it stems from the fact that I've never had a good experience in my life with a printer. So I decided to make my life easier, getting a boring laser printer for documents and a nice small 6x4 photo printer for my photos. I found the perfect one for my use case when a few years ago I got into old Digicams. I discovered that Canon pretty often used to give you a free printer with a Digicam, and they are these small Canon selfie printers. Dye sub printer, which is not a way to taunt your bottom, it's actually dye sublimation. It's a very interesting and durable print technology. Here I have an S1 and an S30. You can tell which one came out before and after the 2008 financial crisis. I've paid like 15 euros for this printer. They came with some photo packs to print. And both of them initially did not want to work, but after using some store brand WD-40 and forcing them to print over and over again, using this trick that I came up with to basically get them used to handle paper again. They both work fine. I mostly use them to print directly from my camera. The ES1 comes with a built-in cable for that. Or of course you can print using your computer, that works fine. You can even connect a USB Bluetooth dongle to them. That never worked properly for me though. I guess my dongle maybe is too new and the printers get confused. They do come with memory card slots and I can just use those if I need to print something without using my computer. Unfortunately, however, there's a problem and that is that Canon killed them. No more photo packs, which include the paper and the ink in one single cartridge. They're not making them anymore. There are no compatible alternatives on the market. So that's why these printers are sometimes even given for free because you can't get any supplies for them. So the ones that I have left here are realistically speaking among the last ones you'll find on the market. Okay, you might buy some from eBay, but- Wait, wait, wait. I have a question here for you on behalf of the other clones too. Uh, can you feed us better food? What kind of question is that? Okay, our second one, this is an extra question. Can't you just buy a new printer? Like, the new ones clearly are better. They probably have, like, better resolution, better quality. Are you sure about that? New printers come with... What's the name? Warranty. That's called warranty. Warranty, yeah, that thing. So if it breaks, they, they fix it for you, I guess. I'm sorry, who are you now? Oh, I'm the technician clone. She made me out of herself because she doesn't know how to do stuff. She's just a girl. This is getting out of hand. So, what... We do in this channel sometimes is we deal with things ourselves. We take matters to our own hands. Two months old. I've never seen the outside world. The only thing I know is podcast. <laughs> no, no, you're cheaper than hiring remote workers or AI. I can feed you with way less money. Uh, I'm talking about making your own, own cartridges, like just figuring out how to make them from scratch, kind of. You can get my pictures now, CIA. You can get them. But first. Let me pay my bills. Let's say that like me, you have dozens of Digicam photos and you don't care about getting likes, getting comments on them. You just want a place you can link and people can see your photos. That's where today's sponsor, Hosting Horizons, comes in. They let you build whatever website you want and customize it by just using plain English. So here, for example, I can just type, make me a website for uploading my Digicam photos, add a drag and drop uploader, also make it compress the pictures. The first draft is done. It works, but I don't like the style. This looks very generic. So thankfully I can just type whatever I want to change here. And there's a lot of stuff that I want in a very specific way. And I can just type here and Horizons can make whatever change I need, including very specific ones here. I can tweak some text or elements manually or even just get access to the code. Everything is very, very direct. And it works so well. I managed to make a matrix mode where this happens and also a snake mode. And you can combine them, of course. And I've also added a bunch of Easter eggs just for good measure. And then I hit publish and and that's it. The gallery is live and I get hosting, the domain for this website, the email address for it. Everything is included. Hostinger's been doing this for 20 years. They have 24-7 multilingual support. They're constantly updating their tags so it gets better and better. And if you want, you can check it out at this link right here. Thanks to Hostinger for supporting the channel. And now back to the video. So what you're looking at here is an empty cartridge. I did put a piece of paper inside just to show you how this works, how it's supposed to look like when you're using it. But I've used the whole ribbon here. There is nothing left to do. You can Google this. You can even ask chat cbt here actually this is why you can't recreate your cartridges F you i'll make them work because i know how humans think and i do have a hunch so we need to open this up to expose the ribbon now you should use a flathead screwdriver i think there are like some notches here uh, i just have exacto knives around so i'm gonna use those 
I wouldn't suggest you do what I'm doing here. It is just very convenient for me because I have them laying around. The way these cartridges are built is super smart. They're completely analog because all they are basically is spicy toilet paper. It's one roll, which is divided in two parts, two internal rolls. It's one continuous loop. And as you print, one part of the roll keeps advancing to the other side, which is where the used part of the roll is contained. You can actually reprint using parts of the ribbon that you've already used by simply winning it back. But of course, you're going to have ghost images from the previous print. You can't escape that. As far as I can tell, the printer can recognize which part of the ribbon is which by reading these lines here. And everything is so simple, you can actually repair a cartridge if it jams by simply cutting out the broken part and retaping the plastic rod here on these lines. Every time my printer is working, it's dividing the picture that I sent to it in three colors, yellow, magenta, and cyan. And then it's applying an overcoat layer that lets me do stuff like this. Now, sublimation means we are transferring the photo using warm dots that are warmer depending on how strong a color is. But unfortunately, what this also means is that if we check this used cartridge right here and we unspool the ribbon, here you can see the PlayStation logo from the photo that I printed for my last video. I did it using this ribbon right here. You can use secret service technology from the 1980s to scan every single panel to perfectly recreate the printed image. This wouldn't be the first time a printer tried to spy on me, but we'll think about that later because now I have to tell you about my theory, which is based on nothing. <laughs> I'm just, I think I know how companies work and like, I think that's unironically the key here. So if we check now what Canon is selling uh, right now in the present, they're still selling selfie printers, but they're a bit different. There is smaller ones with a way worse name. What sticks out to me is that uh, unlike what my stupid ass clone said before, the specs here are pretty much identical to my 2006 and 2008 printers, except for how you interface with the printer. And also apparently you can do the overcoat layer now with a satin finish instead of the glossy one that my printers make. I think they're just like tweaking the last pass, like the way it's hidden. So I went and checked what kind of cartridges these new printers are using and it's the KP108 line, which we can purchase right now, but it's been made for like more than 20 years. And I know that because I also have this piece of junk right here, the CP400, which I've owned for a few years now. I've even printed Gangsta Spongebob with it. It's my first Instagram post. Some time ago, before buying the selfie ES here, I've actually bought ink and paper for this printer right here. And if we check the Wayback Machine, we can see that my printer's the selfie ES one that I'm trying to make work again and printers using this ink right here were sold at the same time and they really really look like two different variants of the same thing a cheaper one and a more premium one both of them can print the same stuff in the same size using the same technology okay so are you really trying to convince me that if I crack this one open it's not gonna have the same ribbon as the one here are you trying to tell me that a Japanese man working for Canon had to tell his boss they had to build a completely different line just with slightly different printer? Of course not. Here we go. Same one. Told you. So now my plan is very simple. The selfie printers do not come with any microchips in the cartridges. So I should just be able to put the new roll inside the old case and this should work. Oh wait, the plastic rod here is differently shaped though. So, okay, I have to like unspool both sides here and remove the rod from the new cartridge and put in the one from the old one which sounds like a job for my friend Parkside here and you build it pop, 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 pop. let's go small disclaimer this was a very very bad idea you shouldn't do it use something less powerful like an electric screwdriver or stuff will happen so just to be clear, here's my idea. We have two rolls here, one used and one new. And we have two plastic rods holding every roll. Even though the actual film of dye, the actual ribbon is identical, the two pairs of rods here are not, they're different. So we're gonna spin one side until we can see the plastic rods, swap them out and then do the same thing on the other side. And maybe it's going to work, I don't know. I'm just throwing ideas here. Oh, and there's also this metal rod here that also needs to be put in the cartridge to make it work, which I think is like key to make everything spin. I don't know, it was inside, I'm putting it back inside. So we need to be very careful here to remove the tape without damaging anything, please. Ignore the mangle curves. What we have here right now is our old roll. Uh, this is a bit thicker. This was 50 pictures, this one is 36. But as you can see, they're matching now. Okay, we have the blue part on the uh, done side and the, uh, the other uh, thing here on the thing side. We removed this from the old cartridge. It used to go, oh God, it used to go here. Okay, so I have to tape it here, I guess. But first I think we should take care of that there. there. Let's put some clear tape and I think it's gonna be fine, hopefully. Three, two, one. 
thankfully, I don't have to be precise with this one because I don't need to use this ribbon anymore. I can just basically stick this here just to stay for a second as I use my drill. You can get my pictures now, CIA! You can get that! So, these are like our old pictures. Double sided tape until. Come on. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the ribbon is officially ready. You have to just lock it in place now. Everything is ready to... We're missing the paper. Okay, I gotta explain this problem in post because it's such a petty thing for Canon to do. So the selfie ES photo packs used to come with paper inside the cartridge. You didn't have to think about it unless you have some kind of paper jam going on. The Canon Selfie CP paper, however, the one that we're trying to convert to work here, fits inside a separate detachable tray and it is just a few millimeters longer so that it doesn't fit in the ES tray. They probably thought about this, trying to make my life harder or like the life of anyone who wanted to do this harder. And so now to fix this, I have to like cut the paper using very precise measurements. Nah, just kidding, just kidding. Okay, that seems to work. Okay. Okay, um, I did prepare a special image. As you can see, it's an abstract piece of art that does not mean anything. Let's see if it works. Okay. 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 This is all promising. You can see my, my cut there. Okay, come on. You can do it, come on. Seems to be working. Okay. Guys, it's working. It's fucking working. Can you see that? The fuck you mean paper jam? I kinda learned this randomly. You should like have the lips of the paper here, at least for a few prints stick out because it helps them like catch it. So maybe, okay, it's taking out the paper. Can you rotate it? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Okay. Can you straighten it? Yes, you can. Can you print? I don't know what's going on now, honestly. Okay, oh, wait, wait. Wait, it's working. It's working. Okay, 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 okay. Come on, don't get jammed. You can do it. It's going up again. You didn't do that before. <laughs> yes! We got the blue. We're only missing the final color and then the overcoat, which is the final one. Okay, we got all, all the colors now. There we go. Yes, and then finally the overcoat pass. Guys, we officially did printer necromancy today. We made history. I don't know what kind of history, but it's, <laughs> it works. Yeah, so even though it works, every color is wrong. I might've been flying too close to the sun. Maybe the chemistry in the prints between different printers is actually different. Maybe the way it reacts with the paper is different. Even though you're the OG and I'm the clone, I was right, you should have bought a new one. And that was a test and you failed. Actually, uh, it was a mistake on my own end. Um, I've done everything correctly, and like the only mistake that I made was actually the way I spooled the ribbon. It was supposed to be put like this, and I put it like this. The 
the only reason I was able to do this at all is that Canon did not put any DRM on his printers. The only like barrier here was the physical format of the cartridge and once you understand how it works you can figure out a way to respool them like I did. And that's something that's less and less common today. More and more stuff is being locked down for no reason. You buy stuff and it stops working after like one year which is insane. And so like I would like more companies to stop adopting like useless DRM and like I understand you don't want to keep if you're a printer company making cartridges forever like that's unfeasible I can understand that however not putting in microchips or weird copy protections means that maybe someday a blonde haired girl with a weird accent will figure out how to make them work again too. I just wanted to have some final notes here unscripted as we print stuff for the outro. So I just wanted to make this video not really because I wanted to specifically talk about this printer. There are a lot of die sub printers, old ones like this one, that are on par with what you get today with a brand new product. I just wanted to give a practical answer to a question that I'm asked all the time here, which is how you find cool tech that is still relevant and works. And the answer is just to give it a go. If it's cheap enough, if it looks interesting, just give it a try. Try to make it work, whatever it is. And if it doesn't work, try to figure out how to fix it. Trying to fix old stuff is something that we lost over time. And we definitely have to bring that back. If I, with zero background in engineering or stuff like that, could figure this out, I can only imagine what some of you guys can achieve, what some of you can save from being waste. And now, a special outro.